Welcome to On Microsoft. So Brad, uh, why don't you give us an idea of what you've been up to recently, a little bit of your background, what you're doing at Microsoft, and so on. Well, uh, a little over a year ago, I took a job uh, as the group program manager for a large part of the .NET framework, uh, mm -hmm. and it's it's been a blast. We've uh, In that time, we've released uh, ASP.NET AJAX, uh, mm -hmm. and we released the ASP.NET AJAX Futures release. We've done a lot of work uh, in, in Orcus, obviously, mm -hmm. in, in uh, .NET Framework 3.5, and um, and then uh, just here at TechEd, we just released uh, the first CTP of our .NET Client Futures release, uh, and that's uh, kind of the big feature there is Acropolis. Okay. Why don't you give me a little bit of background on Acropolis? This is this is uh, for most yeah, of us, like myself. A, it's a city in Greece, right? Yeah, it's it, like yeah. a you know you got Florian columns and big right, white right. Greek statues. Right. What what is this? Well, Where did this come here, from? Here's what. He, Here's where it came out for me, um, is, a, is a couple of years ago, I actually had a chance to go down to uh, Microsoft product support and do frontline mm -hmm. product support for a week just to kind of make sure that I understand how that goes. See what it was like in the trenches. In the trenches, yeah. yeah. And I was just amazed at the um, IT infrastructure that was there. The, mm -hmm. the frontline guys take a call, the call comes in, they cut and, they, they, it does some lookup, finds the user's name, they cut and paste that into another application to find out if they have a count, uh, an account that to, to be able to get support. Mm -hmm. um, they, they get some information out of there and cut, cut and paste that into another application to find out about availability of hot fixes they're asking for. And there's a lot of um, like four or five different applications to be able to serve the customer's needs and they're integrated via this kind of cut and paste integration. It's clipboard style integration. Exactly, basically. it's clipboard. And so I drill into that a little bit with, you know, why, you know, we're like the biggest software company in the world. How come we ended up in this place? And I think it's a story that resonates with a lot of enterprises. Sure. It's a distributed sure. IT shop. There's kind of different organizations with, within there building different apps. They're on different schedules using different technologies produced at different times. So the end result is fractured. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that I really like about Acropolis is that it, it um, seeks to unify. It seeks to provide a composite application framework for knitting together these pieces. Okay. So in particular, it's a framework for building uh, rich client applications that allows that uh, that are that are component oriented. Uh, so if you're familiar with something like a cab or the I was just going to ask you, how is this related to the yeah, composite so we, application it is, block? Um, well, for, we hired one of the architects from that team to come Okay, over. that helps. Uh, that that helps. helps the knowledge transfer. So we and we meet very regularly with them. So I would say it's it's highly inspired by it. We okay. didn't actually take code and whatnot. So they're not like API compatible or anything. They're like not that. API compatible. Although um, if you're interested in this composite thing. Uh, today, the absolute best thing to do is go use CAB, and we, we have committed to doing a rev of CAB to help do the migration to uh, to Acropolis when that. Oh, gets so sort of back. kind of somewhat similar to what you know happened with Wizzy. Azimex exactly. led to Wizzy. Wizzy led to WCF. Exactly. WCF that's a great. That's forward. a great. Uh huh. That's a great okay. way to look at okay. it. And and so like we're doing a lot of learning right now with with you know where is CAB good? Uh, what value does it bring? And then how can we go? Uh, and do a more general thing that's kind of platformized. So we're, mm -hmm. we're baking this. We think about the component model of the .NET framework. You know, right. what do you have? Well, you have object, and you have eye component, and uh, you have eyesight, but, and it's a fairly low level um, kind of component framework. What, kind of fine grained in many it, ways. Yeah, it's very fine grained. So what what would what would it look like to up level that a bit? And I mm -hmm. think you're seeing the a baby step of that in Orcus with the um, MAF, the Microsoft Add-in Framework. Uh, okay. that, that's the technology that you can use to host out-of-proc extensions and uh, mm -hmm. um, user code within your application. Uh, and so we're building on that even more with Acropolis uh, and, and providing a, a kind of higher level framework for that. So obviously Acropolis is still very, very early alpha. Uh, super early, yes. Yeah, Not, early. No, no commit, you know, no one's si signing you, right, you have no right, contract, right, right. nothing is in, is, is in concrete here, but right. 
having said all that. <laughs> um, When's it shipping? No, 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 okay, no, no, okay, no, no, okay. no. Okay. I, people have long since learned, don't ask Microsoft yeah, when exactly. it ships, because I mean, they don't know either. Exactly. <laughs> I'm glad you realized this. Um, sorry, Bill. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> but um, No, what I, was, what I was basically looking for was in terms of end goal for developer experience in terms yep. of using Acropolis, yep. Yep. sort of the intent of CAB was developers don't really build an application per se, you build plugins, components, composite, yep. you know, yep. that will hook in yep. somehow. Yeah, so, so but, but the CAB experience, very honestly, okay. was, uh, this is was great feedback. pretty steep in terms of trying to get up to speed on it. Yeah. You know the fact that that Rolling Thunder had training on the cab <laughs> yeah, yeah. is is in its in itself some yeah. feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you have an idea of what you'd like the developer experience well, to be well, for the so, for, so a couple Acropolis? of thoughts on that. One, one is that certainly one of the differences between Acropolis and Cab is Cab is focused at enterprise architects. Uh, okay. That's kind of the and and those people um, like the flexibility and the complexity and the. Uh, kind of customizability that that cab brings, mm -hmm. whereas we're targeting more um, small and medium business, uh, line of business, kind of departmental sort of applications, where it turns out the problem set is similar, but what they want is some uh, kind of more out of the box solutions, mm -hmm. more things that just give me the right architecture just to start with, and I don't right. I, I don't want to have to kind of do tons and tons of Visio right. design on less that. Less knobs, less levers, right. less flexibility, yes. but less complexity. That's right, that's right. Okay. I, and I so, think that, so, I mean, so what certainly you're saying, there's flexibility, but it's not as at every node possible. Right. You, you know, so what you're saying is well that known. Acropolis is kind of the VB of CAB. That's interesting, the VB of CAB. <laughs> we might have to work on that as our marketing <laughs> slogan. Uh, yeah. um, so, Okay, now I will ask you, do you have any rough estimates, you know, in terms of Acropolis, is this something that you're looking to, I mean, just in terms of gross ship vehicle, yeah. is this going to ship with with Longhorn Server, or, I'm sorry, Windows Server 2008? That's right, we just got a name That's at right. the conference here. Um, is uh, it something you're going to ship as part of VS? Yeah, so it is absolutely going to roll in eventually as part of the .NET Framework, so a future version of the .NET Framework will have this in as its kind of core component model and, okay. uh, and application framework. Um, and and that I, and I, I can sort of bound the first release by saying it's not going to make Orcus. Like we're sh we're sure <laughs> this is our first CTP. We're here to get feedback. It, right. it ain't going to make right. Orcus. That would be a pretty incredible engineering. It, 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 feat it, it would. But, but people, you know, people at the booth ask that constantly. So I'm glad you realized <laughs> it would be pretty amazing. Um, so we're not going to make Orcus. Um, and I believe we will do our first release before the next major framework release. Okay. So what will happen is very similar to the ASP Ajax release where we came out with a product, we shipped it, and then in Orcus, in, in .NET Framework um, 3.5, we folded it in in a compatible way as part of uh, the .NET Framework. But you expect it'll be accessible as like a, a standalone download for some time before exactly. it gets folded in? Yep, yep. Okay, and, and is, is the intent to fold it in as part of VS or the framework? So there's actually, it's a good point, because there's actually two pieces of it, and we didn't actually talk about um, both pieces of it. I'm sort of the framework guy, so I'm focusing on the framework piece of it. Okay. But there's also a tooling uh, feature. Uh, so we did a substantial amount of work with um, CIDR, or with the WPF designer, oh, right, to, right, to right. make it, we, we, you know, it's interesting when you go to build an application today, you don't, you say new solution and you create, the first thing you do is create a form or a window, when mm -hmm. really that's not what you want to do. What you want to do is design your application. You want to talk about things in, in, in terms of the application, not in terms of forms and buttons and controls. Okay. So what right, we've right. built is a baby step at what, what would an application designer look like? Okay. Kind of focus at, at so again, sort of up leveling exactly. the experience. Exactly, trying to up level it both from a platform point of view as well as from a designer point of view. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.